Hello and welcome to a new colour along video. Today I'm going to be colouring a page from this beautiful Autumn Scenes colouring book. If you haven't come across it before, it's just full of the most beautiful Autumn Scene pictures. Lots of Halloween themed, pumpkin themed pictures. Just really, really beautiful. And this is the page I've decided to do with the house in the background and the pumpkins and the cat. And I'm using the Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura watercolour pencils for this page. I'm not putting any primer on the page at all. I'm just going right onto the paper with the pencils. There's nothing on the back of these pages, so that's okay. But what I will suggest is put something on in between the back of the page and the next page because I didn't and as I'll show you later on in the video there was um, some of that seeped through onto the picture on the back. Okay so I'm starting off with the sky in the background and I'm using a cool bulb blue here and I'm making it quite an intense blue towards the top and the top corners and then I'm making it a little bit lighter as it goes further down. Okay so I'll just switch to high speed while I do this part and I'll slow back down when we get to the next bit. Um, I'm not putting this um, evenly or anything I'm just scribbling it down because the Albrecht Dura watercolour pencils melt so easily with the water uh, it's very unlikely that it'll leave like any scratch marks in the paper. And now I'm going to add a little bit more even darker blue just to the very very top and this one's called Helio Blue Reddish. I'll put all these colours in the description as well by the way underneath the video so all the colours will be there listed and I'll put them in sections you know what colours are used for the sky, what colours are used for the house and then it's easier to understand. So the next colour I'm using is light thalo blue and I'm putting this underneath the cobalt and I'm also overlapping the cobalt slightly as well and then I just let it fade down getting lighter and lighter as it goes down towards the horizon um, so it's by the time it gets down to the horizon it's a very very light layer. Now I'm adding the water and I'm using this little angle brush and I got it from a little set of angle brushes by Zen um, which of course I'll link underneath. I'll link everything that I've used underneath as always. Um, so I'm not adding much water, you really don't need a lot of water at all um, and this and these watercolour pencils just melt so easily with a little bit of water. Um, I've got the cloth there just in case I get too much water on my brush and I can just dab it off on the cloth. But I'm sure you can see how nice and smooth um, that's kind of like melting into the paper. This is my favourite bit, this is, the, this is the fun bit other than the water. Okay, so that's the sky out of the way. So now I'm moving on to the roof of the house. 
and I'm using Indian Red and also a Warm Grey 6 first of all and I'm painting the and I'm colouring the tiles on the roof I'm making it kind of patchy I want it to look old and a bit spooky and a little bit dilapidated so I'm making this patchy with the Indian Red and the Warm Grey 6 So once I get the colour down, I'll go over it with the water and then usually the first layer of the watercolour pencils, it's like it's usually quite weak. Um, so of course I do have to add more layers afterwards which you'll see. So I'm kind of adding the warm grey kind of to the edges and the, you know the cracks. Just to get it kind of like dark and shadowy in those areas. And now I'm just adding the water and letting those two colours kind of mingle into each other but I'm not spreading them into each other because I want to maintain some of that red colour. I don't want to completely drag the grey into it because it'll, it'll lose that redness. Okay it does look quite dark and nice when you add the water but watercolour always dries a lot lighter so if it stayed that colour that would be fine but it won't um, you can see the back bits drying already a lot lighter so I'd, I'll go in with more layers and you know get that colour more intense but you've got to wait until it dries before you add another layer um, it just doesn't work it just slips and you can't get the colour down that's if the paper's just damp. If the paper's absolutely saturated, you can go in and use a coloured pencil then um, and it'll be really, really intense. It'll take loads of that colour off the pencil, but we don't want that. So we've just got to wait until it completely dries and then add more layers. But you can easily speed that up with a hairdryer or a heat tool if you want to. Okay, so now I'm adding some shaded areas. Um, like kind of under the eaves here at the top. I'm using a warm grey 4 for this. I'm putting a light layer over the whole area but the side but the side face and parts I'm making them a lot darker like because they're in shade. So the pieces that face and forward I'm just doing a light layer. The parts that are facing sideways I'm doing a much darker layer and kind of under the eaves as well and then I also add a little bit of shading to the left side and the underneath of all the little bricks and this is what I'm doing now and I have to build this up in layers as well as you'll see it turned out the warm grey wasn't quite dark enough so I ended up using the black pencil as well um, but I want the house to look kind of grubby and old so the black pencil is probably the best one to use for that. So for the little porch part at the front as well you can see that I'm making it darker. The, any um, kind of left hand side facing surfaces I'm making those darker because they'll be in shade because my light's coming in from the right and it just makes that little porch stand out and make it look more th you know three-dimensional okay so now I'm going over with the water activating all that and 
once that's dry I can see it's not dark enough so then I go in with another layer you know darken up those left hand side for surfaces or left hand face and surface surfaces and under the eaves and stuff um, it turns out I need to make them a lot darker than I had them um, and it looks much more effective you know getting them really dark really makes them stand out And now I'm adding that second layer onto the roof. So that's the Indian red again that I'm using. And then back in with the black just to darken them up even more I want them really really dark but the thing is it just dries lighter so then you have to just add more layers it always looks jet black when it's wet so this is just kind of random what I'm doing here I'm going underneath that line where the roof tiles end and then the little sticky up tiles, I don't know what they're called, um, where they begin. I'm like making it darker in that, cr in that crevice where they join. And then on these little window ledges and I think they're called lintels above the windows and the bricks I'm just adding little bits of shading around the edges around the bottom edge and the left hand side edge okay so now I'm going to add some cast shadows so this is the shadow that that eaves part that's sticking out is casting onto that front facing wall so it's just kind of a strip beside it of shadow
So I'm doing it for this one as well. And then I also need to do it for And I'm also doing the same for these little walls that are sticking forward. They would cast a shadow onto the adjacent wall. And I'm also going right underneath the edge of the roof and darkening all that as well because all that would be shaded as well. And there will be also a shadow cast on it from the, the edge of the roof sticking out. And then I'm just adding some just extra bits of shadowing kind of around the windows and stuff like that. Darkening up the side walls again. Around the edge of that window there, that roundy window. Make it, that makes it look like it's sticking forward. And then using the black, I'm um, going over all the windows. So that it looks dark inside the house.
Okay, so with the house finally finished, I'm now moving on to these trees and there's three trees in total and I'm using, at the moment, this one's raw umber. I'm just kind of colouring in the, kind of to, to the middle um, and then I go in the edges with dark sepia. If you want to slow this video down, by the way, because um, I've sped it up just a little bit. I haven't sped it up a lot. It's just because a lot of this is repetitive. Um, but you can slow it down a little bit in the settings in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Okay, so now I'm adding the water and you can really see them colours coming to life in that tree trunk. Okay, so here I'm just going in with the dark sepia pencil and just adding some shading just just with the pencil on its own. I don't think I activated this with water. Um, I mean, some bits you don't need to. You don't need to always, you know, wet the pencil. You can use it dry as well. And sometimes just to add details, it's easier to use them dry.
Okay, so now I'm moving on to these background trees. So they're going to be green, but kind of fading into yellow as they get to the top right. So the three colours that I'm using are earth green yellowish, olive green yellowish, and chrome oxide green. So I'm using the chrome oxide green, which is the darkest, um, just kind of to the bottom there and over to the left side a little bit and then I'm using the olive green yellowish and I'm blending it into the first colour and then blending that out but leaving that lighter patch that I'm going to fill in with the earth green yellowish which is a more yellowy colour so it looks like these trees are like you know they're going yellow at the top because it's now autumn Just making them even darker towards the bottom because it makes them look more rounded. And then with the water, I just start at the top with the point on the brush and just kind of gradually bring it down into the darker colour. I think I'm just using tiny little circular movements there. There doesn't need to be too much detail on this because they're just background trees. Okay, so that's where I'm up to so far. I'm going to leave it here and split this into two parts because I want to get the video up for Sunday and it's 3.40 in the morning and I'm only this far through editing it. So I will finish editing the rest tomorrow. Um, hopefully the second part, part two, will be up on Monday okay so i hope you've enjoyed it thank you very much for watching everything is listed underneath that i'm using and i hope you'll join me for part two